Let's talk about the Minis Forum MSA2. This is a beastly little home server. I picked it up. It took a month to get here because it was out of stock, but it finally got here. I got the version with the 9955HX. This is complete overkill for what I need. And so that's kind of what I'm going to talk about a little bit. I'm still going to use it because I'm okay with overkill, but just know for most of you out there, if you're not doing something crazy, this might be overkill for you. And that's totally fine because that's what we do, right? So what's different between this one and the previous generation? Well, we've got this extreme extremely fast CPU. You can get up to the Ryzen 9 9955HX and this one has a frequency advantage even on the desktop part. Some of you might have also seen the MSA one. Now that's a very similar mini PC but it comes with a, an actual AM5 slot. This one's like a mini PC. You know you've got the smaller CPU like a laptop size CPU as people call it but I don't think laptop CPU is something we should be saying when talking about the 9955HX. <laughs> I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30, you know, we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go, 2322. You got Windows 11 Pro and Home. Same with Windows 10 Pro and Home. We now have LTSC versions. This version of Windows 10 will give you security updates until 2032. And it doesn't come with any bloat or AI nonsense, no copilot, no recall. The same for Windows 11. The LTSC SC editions are volume licenses usually acquired in the same way you would get an OEM key and I made a video on where these keys come from I'll link that below so if you have any qualms about using a volume license key then just grab one of the regular keys I don't they work and so I'm going to grab one and we have two flavors of office if you're sick of paying that monthly subscription well you can get yourself an offline version of office 2019 or office 2016 let's go ahead and check out with our copy of windows 11 pro all right, I just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press Start, and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here it says Not Active. Just click on Change Product Key. Paste in our product key and then click on Activate. Hey, look at that. Active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. You can see there we've got the little bracket adapter for the U.2. That's another huge upgrade from the previous generation because before with the U.2, there was a physical switch on the inside when you plugged them in to say, hey, set up the voltage for U.2 or set up the voltage for M.2. Now we have a separate plug just for the power on the U.2. So there's no confusion anymore. They fixed that now and we can run m.2 and u.2 and pci express all at the same time because this has pci express as well if you have low profile cards that are you know single slot they'll fit into this but i'm getting ahead of myself let's keep taking it out of the box and you'll see that this is a very small computer the power supply on this is pretty substantial so i mean this is a mini pc the power supply is like half the size of the mini PC, but that's just the way it is sometimes with these. Now, if you're going to be grabbing this, you're most likely going to be installing Proxmox or Linux or something to, you know, run a bunch of containers, run a bunch of virtual machines or whatever. Now, this one, the 9955, like I have, you can also get the 7945, but we've got 16 cores and 32 threads, 64 megabytes of L3 cache, and this is 100 watt TDP. So this is beastly. It does require a bit of cooling so you're going to hear those fans when it starts ramping up you got 32 threads and this is absolutely fast enough for you to over provision that is so hard for me to say over provision for the ram it supports 96 gigabytes of memory and with the msa1 it supported 5200 mega transfer speed uh, ddr5 memory this one supports 56 mega transfer speed memory and so i've got 64 gigabytes in this that's so much i'll be able to put so many vms on here I think I'm going to have to come up with stuff to do with all these cords, all these threads, and all this RAM. Just so you know, on the second half of this video, I'm going to do a regular test with this using the provided operating system. It came with Windows 11, so I'm going to keep Windows 11 on there for this video just to uh, show you how fast the CPU is so you can like look at it versus other mini PCs and see how fast this is. But in the next video, I'm actually going to throw some parts in there and do stuff with it. I got a U.2 coming in the mail. And even though it's a used U.2, I think a lot of people might want to do the exact same thing that I'm doing because a used U.2, if it's got 95% life left, it's going to last longer than most M.2. All right, we'll get back to that in a second. I'm going to be all over the place. We're just kind of hanging out and talking about this anyway, right? All right, so let's talk about what's really special here, the, the main things. The PCI Express slot. Now, it's 
16 speed size but you've got eight lanes going there and it does support bifurcation as well if you want to get a riser and do some weird stuff i don't know i don't know what a lot of people are going to be doing with this i'm kind of curious i have not been using the one in, in mind but you know i saw a video from jeff not long ago and i'll link that below putting a graphics card in there and using this to play video games it's just something i would never do and not recommend that anyone do and i watched the entire video sitting there being like yep i would never do that that's very interesting so i don't know maybe some people out there want to do that install a bunch of roms or something anyway the next thing we've got is the u.2 and the u.2 it supports up to 15 terabytes with raid 0 and raid 1 so that's just put a massive u.2 drive in there if you wanted to and that'll last you years and years and years and years if you're running a website or doing something that writes constantly u.2 uh, will last way longer than an M.2, especially if you get the good enterprise grade stuff, which most of it kind of is. So if you look under the hood there, you'll notice that we have uh, just one M.2 that's already pre-installed and that's got a ginormous heatsink on there. It's going to keep that one cool. But underneath that fan there, if we remove those just a couple of screws there, three screws it is, uh, you see we have some more M.2 slots. Now, these are all set at PCI Express Gen 3. And that is so they don't overheat because I have something like this. I tried this Fixero in there, which is a, it's a TLC NAND slash memory. They say it's enterprise grade and the way it's laid out does allow it to last a very long time. So I do like these TLC. They last quite a bit longer than QLC. These, I think this is a good way to go for most home users, something like this. And I'll put a link to this one down in the description because I did throw this one in there and test it out. Um, and when I first threw it in there, I quickly realized that this is just running at PCI Express Gen 3 speeds. And that's the other thing I wanted to mention while I was holding this, but I forgot. The heat shield, it does not fit underneath the fan. So I was kind of like, hmm, you know, because there's uh, a reason that it's running at PCI Express Gen 3 speeds. When you go into the UEFI, you can change those all to PCI Express Gen 4, but it gives you a warning that, hey, they're, they're, they might overheat. They're probably gonna overheat. So that's a little frustrating. Um, because if if we just had a little bit more space we could put a, a heat spreader on there if we this is going to sound ridiculous but if we got rid of that fan i would rather have a copper heat shield on my m.2 than a fan on top of it this is going to do a slightly better job at dissipating the heat now we do need to get some of that heat out of there so maybe you know have, it does need a fan on this side so that's the other thing is like we do need a fan on this side because it's such a small case we need to get the heat out of there so it's too small to allow us to have both a heat sink and a fan so we got to pick one or the other and they went with fan because they need to get the heat out of there which is probably the right decision but it's the wrong decision when you you know take into account that this is probably a better way to cool these but we can't use the the heat shield now what i did do uh, and it was a little bit silly is i left the thermal pad on mine which made direct contact with the metal um, shell of the fan. And thermal pads mostly do not sue me or come to my house if yours is not, but most of them um, are not conductive. So just make sure you got a thermal pad that's not conductive. And then that first slot there, it'll not block the fan blades and it'll make contact with that metal. And mine stayed nice and cool. So that's one way to go. Feels a little bit weird to have it touching, but it worked perfectly for me. And like I said, non-conductive. Uh, you're probably going to have to put your M.2 in there with no heat shield. Or better yet, do like I did. Go on eBay, buy a used Dell or Intel U.2. They're going to be somewhere in the PCI Express Gen 3 speed ranges, which are totally fine for, I think, a lot of the stuff here. It's going to run cooler. It's going to last a lot longer. It's built for just constant use. So that's another option. And I'll mention that in my next video when we talk about all this. I guess I should go through all of the rest of the specs before we do the testing. So again, you can get the 9955HX or the 7945HX. So the Zen 5 is going to be a little bit faster, but you know, I didn't realize that they both turbo up to 5.4, but it's just the Zen 5 are more efficient and a little bit faster. Next up, the integrated GPU is only the uh, Radeon 610M. So that's this is not for gaming. If you want gaming, there are, you know, low profile single slot solutions you can put in this, but this is not a gaming PC. Wireless connectivity, we've got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. We do have our HDMI port, and that's up to 8K at 60 hertz. All right, so let's go through the ports on this. On the front, you got your power button, you got your audio uh, combo jack, that's microphone and headphones all in one. Then you got USB 3.2 Gen 1, that's five gigabits per second, and a USB 2.0, handy to have one of those. On the back, we've got two 10 gigabit per second. SPF Plus ports, and those do support the adapters if you 
uh, you know, you need RJ45 or something. And then beside that, we have two 2.5 gigabits per second RJ45 ports. Both of those USB-C right there support 8K at 60 hertz or 4K at 144 hertz. And the HDMI also supports 8K at 60 hertz. And then you'll see we've got two more USB 3.2 uh, ports. The one on the left beside the HDMI is Gen 2, 10 gigabits per second. The one on the right near the 19 volt power supply port adapter thing is that's a gen 1 it's 5 gigabits per second so the interface on the USB-C is USB 3.2 gen 2 and if you're using display port it's display port 2.0 taking this thing apart is really easy you just push down on the little thumb thing there and pull out the entire tray and you've got access to both sides it flips around it's really easy to, to work with so all you need, I just show you I just put it on the screen me talking means nothing you saw how easy that was anyway let's go ahead and hop into Windows 11 came pre-installed and just run through our suite of benchmarks and then once my U.2 arrives I'll install Proxmox and get some VMs going and just talk about that experience and we'll hang out a little bit it'll be even wilder than this <music> Running at 1080p high, we're getting 20 FPS with a score of 843. Integrated GPU is not for gaming. Now, Superposition also uses a lot of CPU for all the physics and stuff. So let's see how we do here on 1080p medium. And again, um, just the GPU is bringing us down. 1256, average 9.40, and minimum of 8.01. But when we look at Cinebench, look at this. It's ridiculous. The single core score is 2165 and the multi-core, take a look at that, faster than 32 core 64 thread thread rippers. This is a few generations old, but still 64 threads versus 32 threads and way lower power on the 9955HX. 31 Three eight nine. Let me know what your score is if you're playing along at home. Next up, I ran Geekbench. The single core score is 3213 and the multi-core is 18530. I'll scroll down so you can see those individual tests right there. Clang, very important. And it's 15.29 clines a second. I have no idea what that means, very important though. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the OpenCL score, 5701. And again, here's the individual scores. All right, let's open up our sensors, scroll down to the smart section. I'm going to go ahead and test out the internal M.2 that came with this just to see how fast that is. All right, this is normally the hottest part of the test right here during the writes, and we're seeing 58C, so that's totally fine. It's got a really good cooling unit on top of the M.2, so all the M.2 you're going to put in there are all going to be underneath that fan, so that's great. That's really good. All right, there you can see we've got PCI Express Gen 4. By four speeds, pretty good right there. I would probably install the operating system, whatever you're gonna install, Proxmox or whatever, on this drive. And if you wanna get an even faster drive for your uh, different stuff, you can do that, but this one's plenty fast. And nice and cool. 59 is what it peaked out at right in here somewhere. Look at the IOPS. That's looking great there on the 4Ks, 178 on the read, 167 on the right. All right, so if you're curious about this, you know, the topography of the board here, well, you can see there's our CPU, 16 core, 32 threads. They're all big cores, two blocks of L3 cache right here. So 64 megabytes in total. And we got our DDR5 in there. And there's our uh, just AMD Granite Ridge GPU. It's uh, whatever GPU gets the job done for regular stiff. All right, now here's the serious part. Let's take a look at the network situation that we have going on here. So we have the Realtek uh, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet controller right here. This is the RTL8125, used these before and had good luck with them. We also have an Intel, the i226. Uh, so depending on what you know OS you're running, if it prefers one over the other, you'll be able to get online and get drivers for the other one. So this is the i226V. And then we also have the Intel network adapter X710. That's for the SPF plus ports on the back for the 10 gigabit ethernet. And then we have Wi-Fi 6E, and that's MediaTek, MT7922RZ616. I'm not sure uh, what all that means. I, haven't, I don't know much about Wi-Fi, I'm sorry. I always plug it in, but yeah. All right, let's see how warm this gets. I'm gonna stress it out. Now, normally you wouldn't be stressing your system fully like this, unless you're doing rendering or something, but if you're doing a server, it's probably never going to be just running all cores hot like this, but let's try it out and we'll watch the CPU right over here to see how warm it gets.
I left it running for a little while because I wanted it to scream. I wanted to see how hot we're getting. It's turning red over here, meaning that uh, it's getting somewhat close to the T-junction max, but this is uh, okay. You know, as long as we're not getting upwards in the really high 90s, I think it'll be fine. And also, look, no throttling over here. So I am okay with this, even though it's warm, but that's kind of what I expected because of the size of this case and the ridiculous power of the CPU. So, all right, so right next to my desk, it's 44 decibels. It's a little bit loud in this room, but you can definitely hear these fans. They ramp up quite a bit, which is expected again. 55 decibels when held, you know, five or six inches away from the machine. It is one of the louder machines that I have heard, so this is not something I would want to put in my bedroom while I'm sleeping. But it's not like this if you're not, you know, processing tons of stuff. It kind of chills out. All right, so I just press stop. And after about 20, 30 seconds, here's what we've got. There we go, 46.9. So just a little bit louder than the actual room itself. So when it's just, you know, chilling and not doing much, kind of idling, I don't really hear it, but you do hear it as soon as you start doing anything. Let's see if we can play a few games. I've got uh, Forgive Me Father, let's try that one. This game may be uh, somewhat silly looking, but we'll see if we can play it because it's got some graphical options here. There, that's what we're doing because it don't want to play. Ah, there we go. All right, yeah, we can play this. Doesn't feel amazing. Got a little bit of screen tearing going on, but yeah, you can, you can, I can play it now. Give me the, so if you want to play an old school game, I don't know what this reminds me of. It's like if Blood were a comic book, I just started playing it, so I don't know. It's a little bit difficult to play on this, but yeah, it works. I'll show you a cool little click adventure, and the main reason that I want to recommend this one is just because the pixel art is so interesting. They did all this stuff by hand. So this is a game that's set during, like, I guess the caveman times, you know? I don't want to give away the uh, too much about it, but... All right, so we're coming out of our cave, and now it's a click adventure. Really pretty. Like I said, I just really appreciate all of the pixel art that went into this. I haven't really gotten that far in the game yet, but if you want to try something with some cool artwork and get some water. So, you know, just, you know the drill. It's another adventure game, but I think it's pretty. Like I will eat that apple forever. All right, so there you have it. It's stupid fast uh, when you just take into account how many cores and threads and whatever else. Uh, gaming, bleh, but that's not what this is for. So what would I change? I think that I think that I would be okay with this being a little bit bigger, actually. Because, yeah, it's nice to have a mini PC, but I don't need to hide this behind my monitor. I need to put this in my, my closet. And I'm curious to know what you would think in the, in, in the comments. Would you want something with this set of specs that's maybe big enough to house a full-size uh, PCI Express 16, you know, card? That's something I would like. Maybe if it was a little bit thicker so I could put M.2 in there with their full-on heat shields, that would be cool as well. I mean, I think we're very close to perfect here, and I think this will do everything for most people. There's one more question I want to ask. Is this too much for you? Because a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, I don't need this, but I like it because I like overkill. I mean, you could go and grab something like this. I'm not exactly sure uh, what this costs right now, but you know, the specs are not quite as crazy, but you can put an extra, you know, M.2 on the inside. And you've got a super fast eight core, 16 thread CPU. You can put 32 gigabytes of RAM in there. I think two M.2 slots, some decently, you know, a decent amount of RAM. It's got USB 4 as well, so you can do other things with it. And a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. Be nice to have two. This one doesn't have two, but some of the mini PCs have two. But I think something like this is all a lot of people need because you put your operating system like Proxmox on one of those, and then you house all your VMs on the other, and then you run, you know, like I'm doing, I'm running output from there over to my NAS, so I can just have a big pool of storage to pull from for all of my ISOs and whatever else I have on there. But it's nice to have all the extra stuff, but do you need it? You could just, you know, you can run a, a server on one of these things, no problem as well. You know, overkill's nice too, so just figure out what you need. And if you don't know what you need, then just go for the overkill if you can afford it. All right, that's enough. Over here on epicpants.com. So we got some sales going on here with the t-shirts, but this is what I want to show you, yes. Oh, that one sold. Uh, yeah, someone bought it. I've got one or two handheld consoles left. Stuff I'm just getting rid of. Got a copy of Windows 98. I got a copy of Windows 7 I need to put on there as well. Some monitors. So I'm just selling some of the used stuff I have around here. And then all of this is half price with the coupon code HAPPYHARDWARE for the next 
don't know, a few weeks. So yeah, head over to epicpants.com and I'll see you online. Mm-hmm.